Hello, beautiful people. We're going to read another bedtime story, My Life After Death, uh, my, my son's book. We're at the very end of adjusting to timelessness. As a human, you often feel like there's never enough time. That's so true. Sometimes I feel like it's, too, it's taken too long. Anyway, um, let's see. Then there are moments when you feel that time drags on forever, especially when you're going through something that sucks. That's because you're giving time more power, attention, and energy than you give your own personal needs. Hmm. You're letting time rule your choices instead of making those choices yourself. For example, look at people who are really good at prioritizing their needs and overall well-being and then ask them about their concept of time. Hmm. I'll bet that, yes, they look at their watch to make sure they make it to that 3 o'clock meeting. But they also don't let it control or ruin their entire day. Say they're five minutes late. They don't let, let them uh, make them feel anxious or guilty. They just roll with it and make up for it as the best as best they can and then move on. They don't freak out and consider themselves a failure or get frightened that they're going to get fired. I would. They relax in their car and think, ah, just relax. Everything's going to be fine. So they're a little late. Big fucking deal. If you're really late, it might be because traffic was all backed up. It might be because they needed the extra sleep after working on a, a project until 3 o'clock in the morning or uh, um, uh, to make sure it was perfect for the meeting. It might be because their kid was having a meltdown and needed some comfort and an extra long hug. In those instances, they're serving their personal needs. These are the people who behave in a way that fulfills them instead of letting that clock run their lives. And those are the people whose energy will reflect this inner peace they've made with the passing of time. And then that energy will reflect outwardly onto their interactions and relationships. I learned once I was dead that time had shaped a lot of my life. The clock alarm rang, rings, I wake up and then go to school. The bell rings and I go to the next class and several classes later, I go home and the sequence went on and on and on in a continuous loop. Sometimes that stressed me out when it didn't have to. Yes, there were times when I was uh, doing something I loved, like putting lifts on my truck so it'd be five, uh, four inches taller. That when, that's when I uh, was uh, in, the in the zone and time seemed to disappear, it became meaningless. Those were the times when I paid attention to my own needs instead of what the clock said. I think that the one piece of advice I'd give to people on earth about time, you're in charge of it, not the other way around. You just have to remind yourself to treat all time the same, whether you're rushing to a meeting or participating in your favorite hobby. It's all just time. If you adopt that perspective, I think that it'll show you uh, in, in real positive ways, it'll show in real positive ways and your life. I'm having trouble reading today. Anyway, that's the rest of that chapter. And next, chapter 16, help with adjusting. Hopefully not his boxers. All right. Thank you for listening, people. Love you. Elisa Medhus with uh, Channeling Eric and uh, Atlantis Scaler. Bye.